قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبيه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأيها المؤمنون عباد الله we will continue our series of lectures revolving around the inheritance and the will of people during these times which have been trying for many of us they have thought about their future their real future which is the preparation for al maut death and this preparation for death there are steps that the believer should be taking on a regular basis in order for him to meet Allah Jalla wa ala in the best way and there are things that revolve around our daily life such as the actions of worship that we are performing the repentance that we are doing the sadaqah that we may be giving and there are matters that will take place after the passing of a person which are also from the good deeds which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has ordained for us and from these actions of worship is what is referred to as al wasiya which is a bequest, a will which is left behind. And this is often confused with the inheritance, al irth Islamically, there is a clear difference between the irth, the inheritance, which Allah Azza wa Jal, He has clarified in the Quran, as well as the Sunnah of His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which relative will take a specific amount of wealth and as for the wasiya which we'll be covering inshallah ta'ala then the ulama they have defined it as being a tabarru' bil mal ba'd al maut so wealth which is conferred after the death of the person and some have mentioned that this is permission of free disposal yani al amr bi tasarruf ba'd al maut so there is wealth which is given contributed on the part of the person who is passing away and this wealth is only taken after the death of that person or it may be free disposal in something such as a vehicle or a house which he wishes a person to live in after his death and so on and so forth so it relates to free disposal usage um, acceptance of wealth after the death of a person at times you may find it, the term wasiya being used not specifically about wealth but at the time of death maybe leaving behind an admonition, a reminder, a last advice for those who are present hoping that they will hold on to that admonition and this is found in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us أَمْ كُنْتُمْ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ لِبَنِيهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي Were you present when death came to Yaqub? And he said to his children, what will you worship after me? They said, na'budu ilahaka wa ilaha abaik, Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq, ilahan wahidan wa nahnu lahu muslimun. They said, we will worship your Lord and the Lord of your fathers, Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq, one Lord, wa nahnu lahu muslimun. And we are Muslims for him. Also Allah, he mentions in another ayah, uh, Ibrahim as well as Yaqub, they said, ya bani, inna Allah astafa lakum ad-deen. فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Oh my children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected for you the religion. So do not die except as Muslims. These lectures which we will be covering inshallah, the first meaning of the wasiyah is what we will be covering, which is specifically related to the wealth of a person which he confers on another. And this wasiyah uh, with the majority of scholars has four pillars. You have... Al-Musi is a person who will be conferring, uh, bestowing, contributing the wealth. You have Al-Musa ilayhi, the recipient. Wal-Musa fihi, and that which is of wealth or property and the likes, which uh, the person will have permission to freely dispose uh, in. In addition to the Sira, the Sira, and they have mentioned that what is intended by it is Al-Ijab, min al-Musi. The one who is 
leaving behind, the one who's bequeathing, he says, I leave such and such amount of wealth or this property or this vehicle for so-and-so. And the recipient accepts. And he said, I have accepted this. This is referred to as Al-Ijab Al-Qabool. And this wasiyah, it is legislated by the Quran as well as the Sunnah and the consensus of the ulama from the evidences of the Quran is the statement of Allah كتب عليكم إذا حضر أحدكم الموت إن ترك خيرا الوصية للوالدين والأقربين بالمعروف حقا على المتقين prescribed for you when death approaches any one of you if he leaves behind wealth إن ترك خيرا it will come to us is it any wealth or a specific amount of wealth a bequest and this is the wealth which will be left behind for the parents and near relatives according to what is acceptable حقا على المتقين it is a duty upon those who are pious and Allah Azza wa Jal also mentions uh, in the Noble Quran من بعد وسية يوسي بها أو دين after a bequest which leaves behind or a debt ومن بعد وسية توسون بها أو دين for a group of men and also for the women ومن بعد وسية يوسين بها أو دين Allah Azza wa repeats it several times throughout the Quran. After any bequest, he may have left behind or a debt. Now, with the consensus of the ulama, what is to be put forward is the debt over the bequest, this wealth which is being left behind. So why is it that Allah Azza wa he repeatedly mentions the wasiya, this bequest before the debt? There are several opinions from these opinions. As Al-Qurtubi Rahimullah mentions, when the wasiya, لما كانت الوصية أقل اللزوم من الدين قدمها اهتمام بها. When the wasiya, this bequest, was less frequently given attention to, given care to, Allah Azza wa Jal put it forward. Also, the wasiya, the person does it from himself, another opinion. The wasiya, this bequest is done on the part of the one who is passing away from his, from his own uh, tasarruf, his own disposal. As for the dain, the debt, then it is something which is thabit, it's established. Those who are in need of their wealth, they will come looking for their wealth, commonly. It's also been mentioned that this is the haddul masakin wa du'afa. It is a right for those who are impoverished, those who are weak. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned it before the dain. The dain is a right of the one who he is indebted to. And he will come looking for it and if there's a need even for authority to get involved, then they will get involved. Uh, other opinions have also been mentioned as to why, but these are from uh, some of the opinions which the ulama mentioned. So as we have seen by way of the Qur'an, it's established the wasiya. And as for the sunnah, then there are many ahadith which our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reported, which command with the wasiya. From these ahadith is that which Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu reports, حق امرئ مسلم له شيء يوسي فيه يبيت ليلتين إلا ووصيته مكتوبة عنده. It is a right upon the Muslim who has something to bequest that he does not spend two nights except that he has his bequest already written. And in a wording of Muslim, which Ibn Umar رضي الله عنه mentions, ما مرت علي ليلة منذ سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ذلك there is not a single night that passed me after I heard this from the Messenger وسلم, except that I had my wasiyah, his bequest already prepared. And this shows you how much the Sahaba عليهم, they strove in implementing the sunan of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, he also reports a hadith to us collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim when they had performed Hajjat al wadaa Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas, he was ill uh, during that time. The Prophet ﷺ came to visit him. Min waja'in ishtadda bihi. Ishtadda bihi. He says there was an illness which he had, which was very severe. And he said, O Messenger of Allah, this illness affected me greatly, as you can see. And I am a person who is wealthy. Wala yirithuni illa ibnatun li. And I have no inheritor except my daughter. Should I give two-thirds of my wealth as sadaqah? The Prophet ﷺ said no. He said to him, half. 
The Prophet ﷺ said, no. He said a third. The Prophet ﷺ said, a thuluthu a thuluthu kathir, aw kabir. A third and a third is a lot. It's a large amount. إِنَّكَ أَنْ تَذَرْ وَرَثَتَكْ أَغْنِيَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَنْ تَذَرَهُمْ عَالَةً يَتَكَفَّفُونَ النَّاسِ For you to leave behind your inheritors wealthy is better than leaving them عالة in a state of poverty where they are begging from the people. وَإِنَّكَ لَنْ تُنْفِقَ نَفَقَةً تَبْتَغِي بِهَا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أُجِرْتَ بِهَا And you will not give any sadaqah, any contribution seeking the face of Allah except that you will be rewarded حَتَّى مَا تَجْعَلْ فِي فِي مرأتك. Even that which you place in the mouth of your wife, yeah, I mean the food that you give her. All of it is sadaqah. So these are some of the evidences from the sunnah, the consensus of the ulama as well. Ibn Qudam rahimahullah, he quotes his consensus. وَأَجْمَعَ الْعُلَمَاء فِي جَمِعِ الْأَمْصَارِ وَالْأَعْصَارِ عَلَى جَوَازِ الْوَصِيَّةِ The scholars in all of the different lands and throughout the different times and eras which they lived, they are in consensus as to the permissibility of it. Now this wasiyah, the bequeathing for another, what is the ruling? Is it an obligation? Is it merely recommended? The ulama, they have differed with regard to this. And uh, I quoted the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal previously, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذَا حَضْرَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ إِنْ تَرَكَ خَيْرًا الْوَصِيَّةِ Prescribed for you if death, death approaches one of you and he leaves behind wealth, he should make a bequest for the parents and near relatives. لِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Now this ayah, a group from the people of knowledge, they have mentioned that it has been abrogated. So initially in Islam, it was an obligation. If a person was passing away, to leave behind this will and to bequest a certain amount of wealth for his parents, for his relatives. But they have mentioned after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clarified to us in the Noble Qur'an, as well as the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the rights of the inheritors, then there is no wasiyah, which is an obligation after this. Uh, Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah, he says, in the explanation of the ayah, this Noble Ayah consists of the commandment with bequesting for the relatives and the, uh, the parents. And this used to be an obligation and the correct opinion among the scholars. قَبْلَ نُزُولِ آيَةِ الْمَوَارِيثِ Before the revelation of the verses which pertain to inheritance. And when these verses they were revealed, نُسِخَتْ هذه. This ayah was then abrogated. وَصَارَتَ الْمَوَارِيثَ الْمُقَدَّرَ فَرِيضًا مِنَ اللَّهِ And those portions of inheritance which Allah he mentioned, they became an obligation. يَأْخُذُهَا أَهْلُهَا حَتْمًا مِنْ غَيْرِ وَصِيَّةِ The relative or those who are deserved, then they will take their right without any wasiya. There is no bequest. It's a right that they have, so they will take it. Okay. To the end of his speech, rahimahullah. And he quotes the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَعْطَى كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّ فَلَا وَصِيَّ لِلِوَارِثِ Allah Azza wa Jal, he has given every person who is deserved of his right, his right, so there is no wasiya, there is no bequest for an inheriting relative. And this is the majority, the view of the majority of scholars, and there are from among them a minority who have taken another opinion, which is that it is still an obligation in certain scenarios. Now Ibn Abdul Bar rahimahullah, the Maliki scholar, he mentions rahimahullah in a tamheed, أَجْمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْوَصِيَّةِ غَيْرُ وَاجِبَةِ The scholars are in consensus that this wasiya is not an obligation. إِلَّا عَلَىٰ مَنْ عَلَيْهِ حُقُوقٌ بِغَيْرِ بَيِّنَ وَأَمَانَ بِغَيْرِ إِشْهَادٍ Except for the one who there is upon him rights, which there is no bayina, there is no proof to establish those rights for the people who are deserved of them. Or he says, amana bi ishad, or there is a trust which he has in his possession and no one who witnessed it. Illa ta'ifatan shaddat fa'ujabatha, except for a group of people who said it's an obligation. So the first part of his speech and the last part of his speech are connected. And that which is in the middle is referred to as al jumla al-Itiradiyya, a further explanation. So we can take from the speech of Ibn Abdul Bar that the ulama are in consensus that the wasi is not an obligation except for a group from among them who have uh, stated otherwise. And then Ibn Abdul Bar, his speech rahimahullah also consists of another benefit which is the wasi which is an obligation. There will be at times in the, in the person's life trust that he will 
uh, be responsible for it. Someone will come to you and leave you with wealth. They will leave you in charge of property. And there will be no witness but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The two of them and Allah azza wa jal who witnessed what transpired. So when this kind of a situation happens, that no one knows that debt or that property which was entrusted to you or that wealth, then it becomes an obligation for the person to leave behind this wasiyah. Why? This is from the huquq, from the rights of the people. That to addun al huquq ila ahliya. You will give the rights to the people. So if we do not give the rights and we um, are negligent towards this, many of the Muslims have relatives, maybe he's a responsible person in the community or someone who the people trust, and wealth is left with them. Then what happens? Negligence on the part of that person. And this leads to them not even writing this in the will. Now on the Day of Judgment, everyone will be looking for their haqq. Everyone will be seeking to save themselves from the hellfire. To the extent that Allah tells us, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ يَدِنْ شَأْنٌ A man will run away from his brother and he will run away from his wife, he will run away from his father, his own children. Everyone on that day will have that which suffices them. So negligence on the part of these huquq, these rights of the people, it will only lead to people seeking their haq from us on the Day of Judgment. Wallahu al-musta'an and there's no dinar or dirham, there's no gold and silver. It's hasanat wa sayyat. So it becomes an obligation when a person he's entrusted to some wealth or the likes that this is written. This is written and it's clearly uh, mentioned in the wasiya. And this is when it's an obligation. Also from the categories of the wasiya, which is an obligation, are uh, the kafarat, days that he did not fast, for example, or days he may have done an action which necessitates expiation I mean, from an Islamic legislative point, which he did not do. Or this could be even raddul madhalim, maybe wealth which was taken through haram. He knows he oppressed a person in a transaction years ago. Nobody knows but that person who was oppressed. We make sure that this is written. These are from the things and we're mentioning them as a benefit for you to know what is coming inshallah. We will get to how to write the wasiyah, the ruling of that and what must be in it inshallah. But this is a forward to what we are in the midst of inshallah. Um, they have also categorized, as we've taken now, when it's an obligation to write. They have also mentioned that the wasiyah can be haram at times and it can also be makruh, depending on what is being instructed by the one who is uh, passing away or the one who will be leaving behind this bequest and will. Uh, from the examples of the wasiyah which is haram, like building the kana'is, the churches, or uh, any form of ma'bad where other than Allah is being worshipped, or a place where alcohol will be drunk, any form of ma'asiyah. In, in, in summary, if the wasiyah which will be left behind by the person contains in it or consists of any form of ma'asiyah and sin, then it's also haram. It's not permissible to do this. Right? But Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَىٰ وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَىٰ الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Aid one another in piety and taqwa and do not aid one another upon sin and transgression. It could be mubah. Mubah meaning that which is permissible. Such as a person leaving behind a wasiyah, a bequest for relatives who they themselves are wealthy. There is enough money to do this without affecting his inheritors. So he leaves behind a certain amount of wealth for his relatives who are well off themselves. Then you have the makruh, that which is disliked from it. And they give an example as being al wasiyah min faqir warithuhu muhtaj. Someone who is needy and he leaves behind this wasiyah while his inheritors or an inheritor is in need. And this is disliked. And this is taken from the hadith of Sa'd bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told him for you to leave behind your inheritors wealthy is better than leaving them behind in a state of poverty where they themselves are begging the people. So they have mentioned that this is disliked. And uh, this leads us to the following mas'ala, which is the recommendation of leaving a will and bequests. Is this only for someone who has much wealth or is it permissible for someone who has a little bit of wealth? Um, we took in the ayah, in taraka khayran. Al-wasiyah. If a person leaves behind khayr, then upon him is al-wasiyah. Now this khayr, is it any wealth, yani mutlaqan, unrestrictedly, or is it a specific amount of wealth? The 
al Hafiz bin Hajar, after mentioning that there is a consensus that what is intended by the khayr in the ayah is wealth, he goes on to mention, quoting from Ibn Abdul Bar, rahimahullah, and this is in Fath al Bari, Ajma'u ala anna man lam yakun indahu illa al yasir al tafih min al mal, fa innahu la tundab lahu al wasiyah. Ibn Abdul Bar, he mentions, rahimahullah, that the scholars are in consensus that if a person does not leave behind except very little wealth, which is insignificant, then La tundab lahu. It's not recommended for him to leave behind a wasiyah. So there is a consensus in, in the matter which he quotes Ibn Abdul Bar. But Al Hafid bin Hajar he has he goes on to mention a stance which is different to that. Now the stance that Ibn Abdul Bar he has quoted a consensus in is a stronger opinion due to the hadith that we have taken, the hadith of Sa'd, the Prophet وسلم, telling him for you to leave behind your relatives in a state where they're affluent is better than to leave them off while they're impoverished. So this stance of Ibn Abdul Bar is a stronger opinion that if a person he has very little wealth then he should not race to the wasiya and he should think about his relatives he should think about his relatives and not leaving them off in a bad state and there is also a benefit in the hadith of Sa'd bin Abi Waqqas where the Prophet وسلم, he clarified to him the portion of this uh, wasiya he told him a thuluthu a thuluthu Kathir, to leave behind a third, and a third is plentiful. So this is the had, the had al shari the legislated limit for a person who leaves behind the wasiyah, and he leaves behind this will, then this is going to be a third. And the ulama, they have mentioned, what if the person, he's alive and healthy? Sanadha masala. What if you're alive and healthy, can you give more than a third? They have mentioned that if the person is alive and healthy, then there's no harm in giving more than a third. But this is a will which will be inherited or people will dispose in the wealth of the person freely after his death. That's only a third. And they use as a proof to show the permissibility of giving more than a third while the person is alive. The hadith is authenticated by Al-Wadi and others from the ulama. When Abu Bakr anhu, he came to the Prophet وسلم, with all of his wealth. And Umar anhu, came to the Prophet وسلم, with half of his wealth. So look, the half and all, they're more than a third. And the Prophet ﷺ, he did not say, you can only give a third. So they have mentioned, bringing unity between these texts, that if a person is well and healthy, uh, in a state where he does not fear for himself at that time, death, then there's no harm. But if there's an illness and the likes, or he leaves behind the world, then you're limited to a third. Okay? So we will suffice ourselves with what was mentioned. And uh, in the coming gathering, we then Azawajal go into a bit more detail with regard to the wasiyah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us by what was mentioned. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.